What's up everybody, Simon here. In this video, I wanna talk about my recent trip for on New Year's to Miami. Beautiful place, great time. But we're gonna talk about how I was disappointed with the lounges while traveling. So from San Francisco to Miami, it's about five and a half hours one way and about six and a half hours on the way back. Now I had credit with United because of all the cancellations and all the updates for travel that have happened in the last year. I've had about four to five thousand dollars credit with United. Booking United with American Express turned out to be a pain in the rear. Now it was one of the worst experiences. So originally I booked my flight with Amex Travel. And even though I have the Centurion credit card, you could check that review on my channel if you don't know about that card. They would not help out with the booking of AmexTravel.com. So apparently Amex Travel and American Express credit cards and their travel service through the credit card are completely different and they don't share credit and they don't communicate well. In fact, the Amex Travel team through the credit card hates working with amextravel.com. That's basically the feel I got from them. So we had to use this credit. To use this credit, there were so many cancellations that we had to do in order to get the refund back, to use the credit, then book it, etc. to the point where we almost didn't have a flight. When we finally ended up resolving the Amex travel with the Amex card, our rep from Amex helped out, apologized. They were great. Amex travel seems like a third world service compared to the Centurion or even the Platinum Travel. We finally got a book. I decided to upgrade our flight on the way there because it was a red eye to business class. Now, I don't know if you've flown, I have an airline travel business. United first class and business class is the worst in my opinion, or one of the worst, it's not worth it. Uh, if you're flying from say SFO or LAX to uh, Florida, I highly recommend JetBlue Mint. You could check out these seats. They're gorgeous with mint. You get a lay flat bed. United is simply just a bigger seat. There was a lack of service on the plane. Everybody was jam packed as if there's no you know, COVID, etc. However, here's the problem with United and the problem with traveling lately given the fact that everything is almost shut down. First, we did not have access in SFO to the Centurion Lounge. For whatever reason, Centurion still has not opened their regular business hours. So we were not able to go to the lounge. They open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is a 13 hour day. However, our flight was at 10 p.m. So we were not able to use Centurion Lounge. I've had my kids with me, my wife, and I was really hoping to use a lounge before getting on a plane. So I, when I decided to book business class or first class in United to go from SFO to Miami, I thought I would have access to the United first club lounge or united club lounge again that was not the case we get to the united club lounge past security and they tell us that we're not able to fly in the united club lounge in san francisco i said what bro what are you talking about man we have a you know four business class tickets which costs nearly two thousand dollars in upgrades alone so i paid that they said you don't have access now if you were flying to jfk or newark you would have access to the united lounge but because you're flying to florida you don't have access what the hell did you just say makes no sense i was kind of upset with united i'll probably never fly with united again if i could avoid doing so you don't get your any benefits for their seats you don't get really good drinks on the plane i mean it's just a run down first class and business class and it's a shame and then no access to the lounge when you're spending two thousand dollars just to upgrade a five-hour flight i found that to be ridiculous so i told my wife i said don't worry there might be an alternative <laughs> we also have priority pass now that the centurion lounge is closed united is rejecting us we may have the priority pass to save the day. Well, the priority pass is the priority pass select. Now, if you're new to the channel, you could check out my priority pass select review on the channel. I've done a good review on that. And here is the downside of the priority pass select, okay? At SFO, the only priority pass you could use is actually at a restaurant in the United Terminal. So or I would say in Terminal 3 where United is based. So basically we got to go into a restaurant. We were supposed to get $50 in credit to eat at a restaurant. However, Priority Pass Select, if you watch my video, offers zero credit for food anymore. So we sat down, we paid for the meal, not being able to use our Priority Pass Select, 
through American Express to cover $50 of fees. Basically, there are no lounges I could have accessed. We got to the airport early that day because we thought there was heavy traffic and travel on December 28th, and that wasn't the case either. We were worried our flights would be canceled or delayed, as many were canceled and delayed. But overall, I am let down with the American Express Centurion lounges. The priority pass select in SFO or in Terminal 3 was not adequate in my opinion. Sitting at a restaurant, not even getting any benefit for it is just horrible. And United, what's wrong with you guys? How do you not offer first class or access to the United Club Lounge if someone is buying a first or business class ticket to travel anywhere in the United States? I get you have many flights happening at once, but still, someone paid a premium for that. And you should allow people to enter the United Club Club lounge if they are traveling within the United States, especially if this club lounge is in the domestic terminal. What's wrong with you? It's done with me. I never liked United. I probably will never book United. And if you're traveling the long leg domestically, look at JetBlue Mint. It's a much better service, as I mentioned earlier. All right, so we get to Miami. It's early in the morning. I actually pick up a Toro Range Rover. Excited about the Toro Range Rover. An individual dropped it off at the airport. It costs $170 a day for the day to go to Palm Beach. We were going to spend time in Palm Beach, check out Palm Beach, beautiful little town, very wealthy, affluent. I've never seen so many Rolls Royces, Bentleys, and very exotic cars. Now, the difference between Palm Beach and, say, Beverly Hills, which I often travel to as well, is in Palm Beach, people actually have the money. They are well off. They are so wealthy that these cars mean nothing to them. In Beverly Hills, people from around the surrounding Beverly Hills area come in with their Ferrari, Lamborghini, their Rolls Royce, or their Bentley, but they may live in, a, in an apartment. They may have not much money to their name or not have a high net worth, but they're flaunting and showing off. In Palm Beach, it is what they are. So these Rolls Royces, Bentleys, and everything are from these retirees that are super successful. And even if they do live in an apartment, they are loaded. People in Palm Beach are loaded. I think that county is one of the most expensive counties in the country. If you look on Redfin, Palm Beach homes are going for five, six, 10, 25 million dollars, et cetera. And they're hard to get and there's not many on the market. So I love Palm Beach, it was clean. There was uh, just each street was just perfect. Restaurants in within these streets or alleyways, which to me was pretty cool. High-end exotic restaurants. Uh, high-end exotic stores. There was a good Rolex boutique I visited. Of course, they had nothing, but I did end up getting a new Rolex recently here in San Francisco. I have to do a video on it and let you know which one. After that, we went to our hotel. We stayed at the St. Regis in Miami, uh, South Beach, and that was a nice hotel. It was packed. The room wasn't as nice. However, uh, it was just great. Was swimming in the ocean, the pool, we had bottle service by the pool. It was great and we enjoyed our time. I got to spend time with the kids. I loved it. We went to several parties and these parties were through the roof. A lot of people from Chicago came in and threw this big birthday party and we got invited to that party as well through my sister. And overall, it was a good time. You could see by the amount of bottles we've drank, we've had a great time. The place that the party was at was called Le Q. It's a very famous Russian restaurant that has, uh, the owner has a yacht or a big boat and it's right on the water. Stunning, gorgeous, so you could see here by the pictures. It was just a great time, enjoyed it. For New Year's, we had a party and I actually met up for some with some people from Brooklyn. Uh, randomly at this party, even though the people that invited us to the New Year's party were people that we met at the St. Regis Resort as our daughters connected and were playing together a lot. Anyway, the beach in Miami is awesome. I love it. I think Miami is a great place. People were happier. People were getting dressed up. Nightlife was great, etc. It just is gloomy in the Bay Area compared to Miami in the current state that the Bay Area is in. So after we had a great time, we partied, we drank, we danced, we just spent great quality time with the family, it was time to fly back. So on the way back, I could not get 
my flight upgraded to business or first class. It was just not available. So there was one seat and I wasn't going to upgrade myself and leave the wife and the kids in economy. So therefore, I had to fly in economy. Now this flight, because on the way back and you're going against the wind, was a longer flight, six and a half hours. It was delayed. There was just trouble with pretty much everything in the flight. My daughter wasn't feeling well, so she had air sickness and threw up on the flight. It was just not a pleasant flight at all. And the people around are so crazy. The people that don't have kids think kids are the worst. That's kind of the thing on airplanes. They think they're flying on a private jet sitting in the tiniest economy seat when kids are around. They don't want to hear the noise or they don't want to see someone cough or whatever it may be. So people are rude. But we finally got to the airport. And again, at that time, I wanted to use my priority pass lounge and in Miami International Airport, the Priority Pass Lounge is supposed to work at Turkish Airlines. Well, guess what? Turkish Airlines, because of so many cancellations, said Priority Pass is not being accepted. So here's the downside of Priority Pass as well as United. Priority Pass simply has a clause in their contract that says, it's up to the lounge to accept you or not during peak or off times. And that's really it. So if there's a lot of people in the lounge, good luck. Your priority pass is meaningless. This benefit from American Express Centurion Platinum or Chase, you know, Sapphire, JP Morgan Reserve, etc., they're all meaningless. It's up to the lounge. And a lot of people, including myself and my family, got denied entry. So we again had to sit at the airport with the common folks, which I don't mind doing, but with two kids. It's really difficult to sit there uh, for a long period of time and really just enjoy everything that you have to enjoy or that you can enjoy before getting on the plane. Now, we didn't have a meal. Usually I eat before going on the plane, whether it's at a Centurion lounge or first class lounge, etc. I love to have a meal, a drink or two, relax my soul and really just enjoy my time before getting on the plane. That was not the case. So out of all these occasions, four times I was denied or the lounge was either closed with Centurion, there was no priority pass access, United didn't care to let us in even though we were flying their first class, and then the Centurion lounge on the way back is at a different terminal than United in Miami, So, which means you have to exit out of security, go through security, go to your lounge, then exit out, go through security again, and then get in the lounge, so it's pointless. Even when we asked the security where the lounge was at that time, they said, oh, it's not worth getting there, you're gonna have to exit and go through security again, et cetera, and we weren't gonna do that with two kids, um, which would have been a mess and luggage. Overall, Miami, beautiful place, great trip. I'm gonna go back there probably in March or May. Just had a fantastic time. I love swimming in the ocean. I think uh, I'm a water person, so if I ever move out of California, I think Florida will be the destination for me. I don't know exactly where in Florida. I'm looking at Naples, I'm looking at Palm Beach, I'm looking at Aventura in that surrounding area. I haven't checked out you know, Tampa or Jacksonville or any of these other places that people are recommending. But just to be near a beach and be able to go to a beach any time of the year is pretty cool. And to me, that's a beautiful sign. And what's great is the real estate there is much more affordable than the real estate where we are. In fact, in San Francisco, a home without any bedrooms just sold for $2 million. It was a rundown. It's in the news everywhere. And it's incredible. People are still buying these. It's in the Noe Valley neighborhood. But who cares? It's just ridiculous what you're getting for here with your money. In Florida, you could buy a brand new build for 1.5 million. That's 4,000 square feet with the latest modern amenities and with a pool. And if you're still on a budget, you could cut that cost in half if you don't care if you're getting a new place or not in a new complex. So that was our trip to Miami. Let me know what you guys did for New Year's. I had a blast. I, I partied on New Year's. There was fireworks, etc. Had an absolutely great time. Came back ready for another vacation after you put in the work or we put in the work. And I am excited. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This video was the purpose of it, I guess, was to discuss one, where I was for New Year's, and two, how lounges with all of these restrictions and with COVID are affecting people's travel and the travel experience. And that's horrible because you're paying such high fees for these credit cards and you're expecting some type of lounge access. And we got denied for both there and back with all the rules and it sucked. And I didn't expect that. So anyway, catch you guys here in the next video. The biggest favor I always say you could do for me if you enjoy these videos, 
is like the video, subscribe to the channel. I started a Patreon page. If you want to buy me a coffee, that page is going to take off into something else where we're going to hold real estate meetings or discussions, luxury watch discussions, and I have some videos coming up on that or anything else in between. So if you guys are interested, check out the Patreon page. The link is below. As always, I appreciate your support. Couldn't do it without you. And I'll catch you guys here in the next video.